Just let me know when you're able to see my screen. Uh, yes, we can see, sir. Okay. Uh, all the new students who have joined in, um, there is an attendance link. Okay. All of you are there in the Google Classroom. Uh, there happens to be an attendance link. Okay. You are supposed to give your attendance there. Uh, this link has been provided in the Google Classroom. So you go to Google Classroom and you refresh it once. You will be able to see an attendance link. Okay. So that's where you'll have to go. You have to click on that link and you have to give your attendance. Your name may not be there. In case your name is not there, just let me know. Okay. Whenever I open the attendance attendance link, just let me know that uh, you know that link is not working. Uh, your name is not there. The next thing is uh, all on my uh, yeah. Anybody? Sanjeev, you want to say something? Sanjeev. Okay. Uh, all right. So, and the other thing is, all my previous lectures they are all uh, available on my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, and the link uh, and all the previous lectures they are available in a single playlist. So, till nineteenth of January, whatever lectures I have done, I had uploaded there in my YouTube channel. So, you can go to that uh, to to that particular playlist, and from there you can watch if you want to review those news. This for especially for new students. Okay, who had missed out my previous classes, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch my previous lecture so that you can get the sense of continuity. All right. Okay, so let's uh, proceed uh, from uh, from where we had left in the previous class. So we, we are going to do problem number two now. So let me just quickly grab. Just a minute. Okay, so this is the problem. Okay, we have to expand this one. Okay, we have to expand this function as a Lorentz series for z minus one greater than uh, great z minus one greater than one. So first things first, we need to figure out what will be the uh, domain. Okay, what will be the points over which we want this to be applicable. So for that, what we do is let me draw the uh, complex plane. So real axis, imaginary axis, and then we need this. Okay, so we have here z minus one greater than e, greater than one. Z minus one greater than one. So this we immediately know z minus one, which is the center of the circle. This is a circle, right? We are talking about a circle here, which is the center of the circle. The center of the circle is at z equals one. Okay, this is where the center of the circle is. So the center of the circle is at z equals one. So before that, let me resize this. So this is the circle. Okay, and this one has got a center at one. That's what this means. This is the center. So this is your z naught. This is the center of the circle. So this is one. That means if uh, what is the radius of the circle that we are talking about? The radius of the circle is also one. So I have a circle whose center is one and whose radius is one. That means the circle it must pass through the origin. Okay, it must pass through zero on one side, and on the other side it it must pass through two. Okay, on the other side it should pass through two. Okay, so this is the uh, circle that we are talking about. Okay, so this is the kind of circle that we are talking about here. 
So what kind of region do you want? So look at the symbol that we have here. What is the symbol? It's a greater than symbol. It's a greater than symbol means which area? Are we talking about the interior area or the exterior area? Greater than symbol means are you talking about the points inside or the points outside? You may just want to go back to this discussion that we have had in the previous class. If it is greater than, if you have a greater than symbol, then we are talking about the region which is Sir, outside. outside. Yeah. Yes. So we're talking about the region which is outside. Okay. So basically we're interested in the region, region which is outside. Okay. So we basically need a circle, a slightly bigger circle, just to give us the sense that we are talking about only points which are outside. Let me grab this one. And this is going to define that region. Okay, so just to give an idea, okay. So this is a region that we are interested in, the region which is outside. So this uh, shaded region is what we're interested in. Okay, so this is where we want to find out the Lorentz series. So how do we go about doing that? So we, we can use the partial fractions, okay? So by partial fractions, what should we have by partial fractions? We want to write down this one, okay? What is the rule? The rule is this uh, function should be written as a a quotient as a as a, some uh, one polynomial divided by another polynomial such that the polynomial in the numerator has a degree which is at, which is at the most one less than the degree of uh, the denominator so in the denominator degree is 2 because we'll get a z square here so degree is 2 so the uh, pol polynomial which we have in the numerator it should have a degree which is a must which cannot exceed 1 okay so here this is z so it is having a degree of z, uh, 1 Okay, so by partial fractions, what we must have is we should have z divided by z minus 1, z divided by z minus 1, and z minus 2. Okay, this we should be able to write as this we should be able to write as some constant, let's call this as constant a and some constant plus some other constant b some other constant b such that a is divided by the first factor and b is divided by the second factor in the denominator so your z minus 1 will come over here and your z minus 2 will come over here so this is what we have to write. Okay. So now we'll have to solve for a and b and find out what is a and b. So I already showed to you in the previous class. Can you please work this out? Can you please work this out and tell me what is a and b? A equals minus one. Minus one. And b equals. B equals two. B equals two. Very good. Okay. 
so those of you who, who have not understood how to do this please go through my previous lecture okay the re the uh, recording of the previous lecture uh, that is 19th of january which is there on my youtube channel please go to that recording and over there you will see okay the steps that is involved in finding out this so a is equal to minus 1 b is equal to 2 okay so this gives us so therefore so this gives us f of z this function f of z this function f of z which is this can be alternately written as can be alternately written as this okay and we can instead just replace this a and b this a i replace with minus one and b i replace with two okay so you can you can actually try it out for yourself if you just you know add these two okay and simplify this you'll get back this one okay so that's your method of partial fractions is that clear everyone Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. So now uh, the domain that we have, the domain condition that we have here, the domain condition is z minus one is greater than one. Okay. So now you see there are two parts to it. One part is you know one by z minus one, and another one is z minus two. But you see the domain condition that is going to give us the inequality that we are looking for. Okay. So now what we have is. Okay. So what we have here is. Modulus z minus 1 is greater than 1. Let me write this down here. Modulus z minus 1 is greater than 1. I would like to use, I would like to use here the expansion for the geometric series. The expansion for the geometric series, which was here. Either of these two, either of these two results. Okay. So either this result or this result. This is what I would like to use here. Okay, let me take both of these. So either of these two results I would like to use in the problem over here. But what is the condition if I want to use these two? What is the condition? Under what condition can we apply? The condition must be that modulus of Q must be less than 1. If modulus of Q is less than 1, then we can apply, then this, uh, both of these summations, they are valid. Okay, So we could just expand 1 by 1 minus Q as this, okay, which is the geometric series. So this is only if uh, Q, modulus of this Q is less than 1. But here, it is not modulus. So that means we want an equation. We want an equation which looks like this. Modulus of something is less than 1. We want an equation which looks like modulus of uh, something is less than 1. But do we have here? No. Here we have modulus of something is greater than 1. So how do we fix this problem? One way to do that would be to take the reciprocal. So modulus of z minus 1 is greater than 1. This implies that that modulus that modulus of 1 by z minus 1, modulus of 1 by z minus 1, this quantity will be less than 1. Because if I take the reciprocal of this one, 1 by modulus z minus 1, that is this greater than symbol is going to become less than symbol. Reciprocal of 1 is anyway 1. So don't have to worry about the right hand side. So this will be less than 1. So this will be less than 1. Okay, is that clear? To everyone yes sir okay yes, sir. so uh, for this first one we don't have to worry the first time we don't have to worry because it's already in this format right the first one because we want a series the the center is at z equals one the center is at z equals one so already it is in minus one by z minus one z minus z naught it is already as one of the uh, quantities in the uh, in the expansion that we're looking for so we don't have to worry about this one we need to worry about this one because we are not trying to expand with uh, around z equals uh, z not equals two. We are trying to expand it around uh, around one z equals one, not around two. So we need to worry about this one. So this one will leave it as it is. So this is fine. Okay, this is fine with me. I'm perfectly okay with this term. But this term, we need to work on this a little bit. Okay. So how do you work on this a little bit? 
we need to write this in a form so that we can express it like this. Okay. Just give me a second. Somebody is trying to join. Okay. So we'd like to write it in this form. Okay. So how do we go about doing that? So first, let me just bring this two by z minus two. Okay. So two. Oops. Two divided by z minus two. This is the term that we're interested in. This we write as. Okay. I'll take the two outside. Okay. I'll take the two outside times. Um, you could do something like this in the numerator because I have taken two outside. So we'll have one. And in the denominator, we have z minus two. I could write this as z minus one minus one. I could do that, right? So now I take this z minus one common. Okay. I take this z minus one common. So two divided by two divided by I take z minus one common. So z minus one common, you see, this is the z minus one. This z minus one, I take it common outside. So what is left behind? What is left behind is numerator, we have one. I have taken z minus one common, so we'll get a one. A one will be outside, okay? And then we have minus, then there is a one here. So one divided by, because I have taken z minus one common, one divided by z minus one. Okay, so this is what we will get. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. This a little bit down. Okay, so now we have we have this one, right? So let so if we let q equals if we let q equals 1 by z minus 1 that is this quantity is your q okay this entire quantity let's say i call this as q then you look at this condition here okay you look at this condition here so we have uh, you know this entire thing i call it as q this uh, either of this or this so now which one we're interested in we are interested in this one okay so therefore we are interested in this that is 1 by 1 minus q that's what we're interested in 1 divided by 1 minus q okay 1 by 1 minus q and what is this q this q is 1 by z minus 1 this is what we are interested in because this is what appears over here so 1 by 1 minus 1 by z minus 1 this is what we are interested in and this of course you look at it the, the, this as q so which one of these we'll use i will use the first one so first one is 1 plus q, okay, and q is 1 by z minus 1, okay, plus q squared, which is 1 by z minus 1 squared, okay, plus q cube, which is 1 by z minus 1 q, and so on. So this is the expansion of this term. Okay. I'm just using the first one okay. because the condition is satisfied. So now all you have to do is just replace this over here. So this gives us, so this gives us, this is equal to, this is equal to two divided by Z minus one times 1 divided by 1 minus 1 by z minus 1. This we have already found out. This expansion, we have used the geometric series and this expansion is this one. And as a result, we'll get 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by z minus 1 plus 1 by z minus 2 whole squared plus 1 by z minus 1 whole cube and so on.
so we'll get a squared here and we'll get a cube here and so on okay so this is what you will get now next thing that we need to do is we need to just multiply there's a 1 by z uh, 1 by z minus 1 that you have to multiply everywhere and when we do that this 1 by z minus 1 when i multiply this throughout so what will happen is we will get a 2 by z minus 1 when it multiplies this 1 Okay, when it multiplies this 1, what happens is we'll get 2 by z minus 1. Okay, and then we'll get this one. Here we'll get, we're going to get another 2. We're going to get 2 here. And z minus 1 into z minus 1, we'll get z minus 1 squared. Okay, we have got, we're going to get a z minus 1 squared. And in a similar way, we will get here when you multiply when you multiply one by uh, two by z minus one everywhere. So you'll get two here, and this squared is going to become cube. This cube is going to become to the power four. So you'll get two. This is going to become a cube z minus one cube. This is two. This is z minus one to the power four, and so on. Okay. So this is the expansion that we got here. Okay, so f of z is basically this. Let me grab this here. Hence, we will have this one this is already done this we have just now we have calculated we have computed that this is the summation so we place it with this okay we we we, we can combine these two right uh, two by z minus one minus one by z minus one these two can be combined together and as is a two minus one is one 2 minus 1 is 1. Because we have combined these two, so this will go. This is the Lorentz series expansion that we are looking for. This is the This is the required Lorentz series. Fine. Is this clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's yes, look at the last problem that we are planning to do. Okay. Good. So we'll look at the last problem that we are planning to do. We are planning to do question number four, right? So let me grab this. Question number four. Okay, so in this problem, what you're supposed to do is we're supposed to obtain the Lorentz series expansion, but not in a region. You just said you have to obtain the Lorentz series expansion about Z not equals one. Z not equals one. So uh, it is not specified that we want this much radius. Z not equal to one. That means you can choose. Okay, this is what this is what is happening here. Okay, this is what is happening. Let me draw the complex plane. What is the difference between this pro problem and the previous problems that we have done? The difference is basically this. Okay, so here the point Z not that we are talking about. That point Z not is Z not equals one. So this is your, this is the point that we are talking about z not equals 1 okay so this is your z not equals 1 okay so this is 0 z not equals 1 and so on so what we want is we want the Lorentz series expansion of this function about this point so this is your z not about this point so what kind of radius do we want 
Do you want a smaller radius, larger radius? Doesn't matter, any radius, as long as whatever region I'm choosing, that region does not include this one, this Z0. So it could be this small, or it could be this large, or it could be this large, it could be anything, okay? It could be anything. So the radius, the region that we're interested in, the region is Z minus one is greater than zero. That's what we're interested in. Because if Z minus one, if it is equal to zero, that means we are talking about Z equals Z naught. That's the point, right? Z naught in the point Z naught. There cannot be any equality sign, it's just greater. So any radius which is greater than zero, any radius which is greater than zero, we are just interested in that. Okay, is that clear? So we are talking about here, we are interested in, because it's greater than, we are interested then in this region, which is outside. We are interested in this region, which is outside, okay? So that's what this means here. That's what, that's the difference between this problem and the previous problem. Is that clear? So problems like this, how do we go yes, about sir. solving them? So in this problem, uh, we have this, uh, you know, e to the power uh, z, there's an exponential function. So yes, so uh, one way by which I could do that is, uh, in such problems, the z minus one, whatever you have in the denominator, no, z minus one, whatever z minus one is raised to the power three, just replace, make a substitution of variables, okay? So here what we'll do is, I'll make a substitution of variables. So let, okay, I'll let this z minus one, whatever is there in the denominator. In the denominator, we have Z minus one. This one, let's call it as U. Z minus one, we'll call it as U. Okay? So this implies, this implies that Z is equal to, Z is equal to U plus one. Z is equal to U plus one. And hence, therefore, two Z will be equal to 2 into u plus 1. Why are we making this substitution? It will become clear in a moment. Okay, because there is an advantage. <coughs> we have e to the power twice z, and this e to the power twice z, this has got a well known this Taylor series expansion. So you can utilize that fact. Okay, so e to, twice z is this. So therefore, therefore, this function f of z, okay, this function f of z will make a change of variables. We will write this function in terms of u now, okay? And when you write this function in terms of u, what will happen? In the numerator, we have e to the power, earlier we had e to the power twice z, divided by z minus one, right? Z minus one whole cube, right? Z minus one whole cube. So this is what we had earlier. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to rewrite this. This twice z, I will replace with two u plus one. This twice z, I'll replace with two into u, plus one and in the denominator we have z minus one whole cube this z minus one whole cube i'll replace it with u cube okay in the denominator we'll just replace it with u cube so as a result we will have e to the power two u plus one divided by u cube so this is i have just i have you know made a ch change in variables and we have written the original function in this format Okay, so this is what we have here. All right, now let's try to simplify this a little bit. This is, this is equal to, let's bring this down here, see what we can do about this one. First of all, this, power that we have e to the power 2u two 2u two plus 1 so we can just write it as 2 e to the power 2u plus 2 okay divided by u cube and uh, this one can be written as this can be written as e to the power 2u and I could just split this up like this, right? I can do that, right? No problems there, okay? Now, once we have done this, then what we do is, uh, I take this, whatever is, you know, this E square, okay? E square is a constant. E square is a constant, 
okay so we'll put this aside and there is this u cube also we'll just combine this because we are going to need this this e square by u cube okay we'll just uh, keep this together okay so th this we'll keep it together and then this e to the power twice u we are going to use the taylor series expansion of this so e square by u cube and e to the power twice u now we're going to use taylor expand this one so what is this going to become equal to taylor taylor series expansion of e to the power z is 1 plus z plus z square by 2 factorial plus z square by 3 factorial and so on so here we are going to replace this with its taylor series expansion taylor series expansion of e to the power twice u So this is going to be equal to e to the power twice u. The Taylor series expansion is 1 plus twice u plus, so we have twice u by 2 factorial, twice u squared, whole squared, divided by 2 factorial plus twice u whole cube by 3 factorial and so on. Now just multiply this, okay? 1 by u cube, you just bring it inside. Leave that e, e square, you leave it outside and just multiply, okay? Uh, 1 by u cube, you just bring it inside. And when we do that, when we do that, this uh, u cube, okay? This goes inside, okay? 1 by e square will remain outside as it is. So u cube goes inside. So we will have 1 by u cube. We'll get a first, we'll get a 1 by u cube. Then when you multiply this with 2, when you, when you, this, uh, div uh, 2u, when you, multi when you divide by u cube, 2u, when you divide by u cube, then what happens is this u will vanish. And this u cube, this is going to become u squared. So 2 by u squared. Okay. So 2 remains up and then we'll get a u squared. In a similar way, so here we'll get, uh, we had u squared. So u cube goes here. Okay. u squared divided by u cube is 1 by u so as a result this is going to become this 2 squared is going to become 4 so as a result we'll have in the numerator we have in the numerator we have 4 and in the denominator we have 2 factorial divide 2 factorial into u because we have u squared divided by u cube so that's going to give us u then this u cube when it goes here u cube and this u cube gets cancelled Okay, this u cube and this u cube gets cancelled. So as a result, 2 cube, which is going to give us 8. 2 cube, which is going to give us 8 divided by 3 factorial. Okay, next term, just get, just, let's just get one more term here. Okay, let's just get one more term here so that it becomes clear. What will be the next term? Just may, maybe a couple of terms we'll get here. What will be the next term? The next term will be? twice u to the to power, power two by four factorial. Okay, and one more, twice u to the power five by five factorial. Okay. So this, this is what's going to be. So what will happen here? What will be the next two terms here? one by u cube when you multiply it here. So we have, uh, there is a u, u to the power four divided by u cube. So we'll get u in the numerator. Okay, and then we have 
2 uh, to the power 4. 2 to the power 4 is 16, right? 2 to the power 4 is 16 divided by, and there is a 4 factorial, 16 divided by 4 factorial, and then we will have u. Then what else? Next term, what will be the next term? Uh, 32 to the power 5. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. That's it. exactly. So 32 u squared divided by 5 factorial. Okay, and so on. So this is what we get. Now the rest of it is very easy because ultimately we have to start with f of z. I mean, we have to get everything in terms of z. So all you have to do is just replace this u with z. That's all. So f of z, what will this be equal to? Wherever it is u, replace with z. Okay. So e squared as, as it is from before. And then here. Let's make the substitution. So there was a 1 by u cube. So that's going to become, what is u? u is, u is equal to z minus 1. So 1 by z minus 1. So we get a 1 by minus 1. So we have a 1 by z minus 1 one as the first term. Next, what will be the next term? Next term will be? 2 by z minus 1. Minus one yes. So plus 2 divided by z minus 1 whole squared. So this gets replaced with z minus 1. Let me get this. z minus 1 whole squared. And so on. Okay, so after that will be 4 by 2 factorial into z minus 1 and so on. Okay, so just like maybe a couple of terms here. It's, it's better that I right by hand. Next we have 4 divided by 2 factorial into z minus, okay, there's a cube here, I forgot this, this it's actually a cube, my mistake, z minus 1 Next term will be 8 by 3 factorial, as it is 8 by 3 factorial. It does not have any z term. Next one will be 16 by 4 factorial, z minus 1. Next one will be 32 by 5 factorial times z minus 1 squared and so on. So this is the this is the Lorentz series expansion that we are looking for. Okay, this is the required Lorentz series expansion. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so please try the other problems, okay? Please try the other remaining two problems, okay? So now I'll move on to the next topic. Okay, the next topic is zeros and uh, uh, zeros and uh, poles, okay? Zeros and poles of a um, complex function, okay? Of, of a um, uh, analytic function, okay? Of a complex function, zeros and poles, okay? 
So zeros, uh, poles, of course, uh, I mean, if a function has got a pole, it's not analytic, but the zeros, uh, an analytic function could have points which uh, in which it could become zero. So we call these points as the zeros of an analytic function. So what are zeros of an analytic function? The name itself, it suggests what is zeros. So a zero is a point at which the function vanishes. Okay, So that's the meaning of the word zero. Okay, Very straightforward. Okay, So zero is the point at which the function vanishes. Okay, so suppose I have a point Z0, which belongs to the domain, then this point Z0 is called a zero if the value of the function is zero at that point. Okay, so that's why it's called as a zero. Okay, very straightforward. So an analytic function, so then zeros also have got an order. Okay, the analytic function has got a zero of order M at Z0 if you take the mth derivative of the function and you put Z0 if it is non-zero, but for all the values of k which is less than m. So let's say m is, uh, let's say you have, a, I will see some examples, then it's going to become clear. So let's say I have, um, you know, um, a function f of z in which um, you uh, differentiate it. You first, you take the first, at z0 it is 0. Then uh, if the first derivative of the function is also 0 at z0, okay, then you differentiate once you get the second derivative. Again, the value of the second derivative at z0 is 0. But if you take the third derivative, the value of the function as z0 is not 0. Then 2 is the order of the 0. Okay, So you keep on differentiating. 0 derivative, that's the function itself. First derivative, second derivative. But this third derivative, substitute the same z0, it is not 0. Okay, it is The value is not 0. In that case, still the second derivative. So second derivative, that means 2 is the uh, order of the 0. Okay, So that's the meaning of the order of a 0. Okay, So let's take some examples. Uh, for instance, first one is f of z equals sine z. Okay, I'll just show you a, maybe a couple of these. Then you can try out the rest for yourself. Let's try out for first and the, which one you want me to do first and second. I'll do the first one, second, third, fourth. Which one shall I do? Four points. What about three? Three. Let's do three. Okay. No, four is a little uh, challenging, so I'll leave it to you. Let's do one and three. Okay. I'll do one and three. You do two and four. Okay. So let us take this problem number one to a new slide. So we need to find out the zero and its order. So find the zero of f of z and its order. All right, so we have f of z is equal to sine z. This is easy because sine z we immediately know. Moment you say sine z, you know it's an analytic function. Analytic function means it has got a power series representation, right? It is analytic everywhere. So you could immediately write down the um, this um, Taylor series expansion. What is the Taylor series expansion of sine z? What is the Taylor series expansion of sine z? Anyone? Taylor series expansion of sine z. Z, what will be the next term? Minus z cubed by 3 factorial. Next, we'll have a plus, alternating plus or minus signs. z to the power 5 by 5 factorial, OK? Then next, again, minus sign, z to the power, because odd power, 7 by 7 factorial, and so on, right? Sine is a sine function is an analytic function. It has got a Taylor series expansion like this. It is analytic everywhere. The radius of convergence is infinity. So this is a sine z. Now, which is the, so that means you have to look for a value z0, okay? For z0, what is the value z0 for which this function will be zero? You can see here every term, every term has got at least, you know, one z, right? There is a z here. 
there is a z right i mean every term has got at least z right so if i put z not equal 0 then this will be 0 this will be 0 this will be 0 everything will be 0 right if z not is equal to 0 then the function the value of the function at z not the value of the function at 0 the value of the function at 0 will be 0 minus 0 cube by 3 factorial plus 0 to the power 5 i'm writing it explicitly minus 0 to the power 7 by 7 factorial all these terms have got at least 110 one, that means this result is also 0 is that clear now this the function is f of 0 is nothing but the zero derivative because zero derivative is the function itself right zero derivative of a function is the function itself so we can say this is zero or the zero derivative of the function at z not equal to zero the, its value is zero itself is zero itself okay now what about uh, f1 there is a first derivative of z what will be the first derivative of z what will this be what will be the first derivative the first cos derivative z. is cos, cos z. z right cos z okay so this implies what will be the first what will be the value of the first derivative at what will be the value of the first derivative at 0? That same z0. The z0 is 0. What will this be equal to? This is equal to cos of 0. And we know that cos of 0 is definitely not 0. Because cos, what is the cosine series? It will be 1 minus z square by 2 factorial plus z to the power 4 by 4 factorial. So the first term is 1. The first term is 1. So if you put 0, all the except the first term, everything else is going to become 0. So what will be left behind is will be left behind with 1. Is that clear? Is that clear? So which is definitely so the, which is definitely non-zero, right? This is definitely non-zero. So if you look at the uh, if you look at the definition, what is the order? What is the order m? For k less than m, if the derivative, if the kth derivative, for k less than m, if the kth derivative, the value is zero, and for this one, uh, for the mth derivative, it is non-zero, then m is the order. So here we could another way of writing the same thing is is this way. So another way of writing it is in this way. Okay. So we have here f zero at z0 equals 0, this value is 0, f1 at z0 equals 0, this is non-zero. It doesn't matter. If you take the second derivative onward, it doesn't matter. You get a non-zero value here, that's it. So this is where you have to stop. So you have been, this is giving the value 0 till here. So this till here is your k. This is your k values. And here, this is your m value. That is, this is a k value here. This is your m value here. Okay, this is the m value here. So therefore, what is the order? Order is always m. Order m is equal to 1. Because the first derivative, when you take the first derivative and you substitute z0, that one is not taking 0. When you substituting z0, it's not becoming 0. So order is 1. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. So for the first problem, f of z equal to sine z, okay, the order is 1. Let's take an example where the order is not 1. Okay, so I'll take the third problem. I'll take the third problem. The third problem is a case where you it's not order is not 1. Okay, so let me take this one. Okay. So here we have, you know, f of z is this. Okay, so let me write this formally. That is the zeroth derivative. The zeroth derivative is 
e to the power e to the power z minus z minus one. Okay. So what could be your z naught? Just try what could be z naught. If I put z naught equal to zero, if I put z naught equal to zero, what will I, what will happen here? If I put z naught equals zero. What will be the zero derivative at zero at z not equal zero? What will this be? It will be e to the power zero minus zero minus one. E to the power zero. Anything to the power zero is one. This is zero minus one. So this is equal to zero. Okay. What about the first derivative? The first derivative of f. What will this be? Differentiation of e to the power z is e to the power z. Differentiation of z is one. Differentiation of one is anyway zero. What will this be? What will this be? E to the power zero minus one. This is one minus one. This is also equal to zero. Fine. What about the second derivative of this function? What about the second derivative? E to the power z is e to the power z minus this is anyway zero. What will this be? The second derivative substitute z not equal zero. What will you get? We will get e to the power zero, which is equal to one, which is non-zero. Okay. What about the third one? We actually don't need the third one, but still, is differentiation of e to the power z is again e to the power z, right? At z not equal zero, this will be e to the power zero, which is equal to one. This is also non-zero. So you can see here, till here it is zero, okay? But from here it is non-zero. Till here it is zero, but from here onwards it is non-zero, okay? So what is the max? What is the minimum derivative? Minimum derivative at which it's become non-zero. The minimum derivative is two. The minimum derivative is two. So that means m equals two. M equals two. So in this problem, so in this problem, z not z not equals zero is a zero of order 2 z not equal 0 is a 0 of order 2 okay is this clear to everyone yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay so that's about zeros of analytic functions Okay, there's a theorem for zeros of analytic functions. If an analytic function f of z in D has a zero of order m, so you know how to find out the order m. Okay, suppose I have an analytic function f of z, which has got an order a zero of order m at z naught, then there exists an analytic function g of z in D such that, you know, f of z is can be written in terms of g of z, okay, is z minus z naught to the power m. Okay. So then this g of z has got a Taylor series expansion given by this. Okay, so I have an analytic function. Okay, that analytic function has got a zero of order m. Then there exists another analytic function, z minus z naught to the power uh, g of z, such that this original function can be written as z minus z naught to the power m into this g of z. Okay, um, in terms of this problem that we've had, let me just try to uh, relate over here the problem that we had done, right? F of z, just now the problem that you had done, f of z equals e to the power z minus z minus one, okay? It has got, has a zero at, has a zero of order two, has a zero, of order two, order two means m equals two, as a zero of order m equals two, 
at z not equals zero. Okay, so there that means there exists. So therefore, there exists. There exists g of z. There exists g of z such that there exists g of z such that uh, f of z that is this one e to the power e to the power z minus z minus one can be written in this way can be written in this way this is remember this is f of z can be written as z minus z not z minus z not is z not is zero only right so z minus z not is z to the power m m is two so z square times g of z times g of z okay so this gives us z square and what is g of z g of z has got a tailored series expansion so in this case what is the tailored series expansion it is simply f n z not by n factorial into z minus z not n minus m so n it starts from m okay so uh, this will basically be let me write this summation here so summation summation this n where will it start from n equals n start from m and what is m here m is 2 to the power starting from n equals 2 all the way till infinity and then we have f nth derivative at z naught f n derivative at z naught divided by n factorial into z minus z naught z minus z naught is nothing but z itself in this case z minus z naught is z and n minus m m is 2 m m is 2 so n minus 2 z to the power n minus 2 so this is what will be now we know from here that every subsequent uh, derivative okay we know from here because you see from here know that every subsequent this is for n greater than equal to 2 because you can see here for n equals 2 for n equals 2 for n equals 2 okay for n equals 2 you have e to the power z e to the power z and so on so for n greater than equal to 2 this value this derivative is going to give it's going to be e to the power z only okay so consequently, we will have here, we can just use that idea. And this is going to give us, oops. I'll let me write this here, okay? This gives us e to the power z minus z minus one. This is equal to, so we have z squared, we have z squared. And then here inside what we have is f n derivative, n is equal to two. Right, so we have the second derivative of z naught, which is e to the power two, sorry, e to the power z. The value of that is at z naught will be zero divided by two factorial. Okay, and then we have uh, n starting value is two, so two minus two is z to the power zero. Then plus next one n equals 3, n equals 3 also, that derivative will be e to the power z, put z naught equals 0, put z naught equals 0, this is going to give us e to the power 0 divided by, and then here, 2 after 2, next number is going to be 3 factorial, and this is going to give us z to the power 3 minus 2 is z, next one is going to be e to the power 0 again, divided by this is going to be 4 factorial into z to the power 4, uh, this, uh, we have 4 minus 2 is 2 and so on. Okay, and e to the power z and all this is anyway going to be equal to 1, right? So this is going to be 1, this is also 1, this is also 1, this is also 1. Okay, so we will have 
1 by 2 factorial, 1 by 3 factorial to z, 1 by 4 factorial into z square and so on. So this is what it is. So you multiply this z, uh, z square throughout. Okay, so that is going to give us a series expansion. So using this theorem, you can actually directly get, if you know the zeros of a uh, function, analytic function, if you know the zeros of an analytic function, using this one, using uh, this theorem, you can directly find the expansion. So not only e to the plus z minus z minus 1, you can also find out what is its expansion. Okay, the, ta the Taylor series expansion, you can directly find it from here using this theorem. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Let me clear this. Okay. So there are many different kinds of zeros. One is just an isolated zero, a zero which has a neighborhood containing no other zeros. Then, just a second. then we have. Uh, Zeros of analytic functions are always isolated, okay? So if f of z has a zero in every neighborhood around z not then it cannot be an analytic at z not unless it is a zero function. So if you find a function that has a non-isolated zero, then either the function is a zero function or it is non-analytic, very important point, okay? So zeros of analytic functions, they are always isolated, okay? So you cannot find a neighborhood in which and it's of, of a zero in which another zero is contained. So if you can find a non-isolated zero, that is I have a function, which is having a zero value at some point, and then nearby there is another point, then you know that either that's a zero function or it's a non analytic function. So this becomes a test for non analyticity of a function. Okay, if you can at least show that there is at least another non isolated zero, so it's going, it's going to be a test of a, uh, a non analytic function. Okay, so that's about zeros of analytic function. Then we have singularities. Okay, uh, it's 138. Okay, let me just continue. Continue from here. Singularities are function are points where the function ceases to be analytic. Okay, those are points where the function does no longer become uh, remains analytic. So there are different types of singularities. What first is known as a removable singularity. Removable singularity is if the function if the f of z is not defined at z naught but it has got a limit at z naught. Okay, so then it is known as a removable singularity. Okay, so um, for example in, in in this case, okay, so we have this f of z equals e to the power z minus 1 by z. Okay, so this is a function which is given. So in this case, this is a removable singularity. And how do we know that? You can just work it out for yourself. It, is, it has got a limit at z naught. Okay, so now suppose I have here. f of z okay is equal to minus 1 divided by 0 okay so numerator we have 1 minus 1 by 0 so we have 0 by 0 which is undefined right which is undefined so it means it suggests it suggests because the value of the function is undefined at z naught it suggests that okay it suggests that z naught equals 0 is a singularity Okay, but this is not really a singularity because it's a removable singularity. That means we can remove the singularity. We can remove the effect of the singularity. Simply, instead of taking the function, instead of taking the function, how about I take the limit of the function? There are two ways by which you can approach a value. One is you put the value directly. Another one is you tend to that value. Okay, so z tends to zero. Instead of that, what will this be? Okay, so this is what we need to do. So limit as z tends to 0 of the function. What is this function? e to the power z minus 1 by z. Okay, so this is going to be equal to limit as z tends to 0. So we have 1 by z. Okay, we have 1 by z. And then we have e to the power z. e to the power z is 1 plus z plus z square by 2 factorial plus z cube by 3 factorial and so on right this is your e to the power z this is e to the power z and then what we have is minus 1 e to the power z minus 1 this is what we get so this minus 1 and this one will get cancelled out and there is a 1 by z so it means we will have limit as z tends to 0 limit as z tends to 0 what is left behind 
1 by z goes inside so z this one has got cancelled out anyway so z by z is 1 okay then we have z square by z is z by 2 factorial this power has reduced because you are dividing by z so powers will reduce by 1 z cube is going to become z square by 3 factorial and so on this is what is going to become now you can take the limit now taking the limit means just substitute the value z equals 0 so when you put z equals 0 this is 0 this is 0 everything is 0 except the first one so this result will be equal to 1 which is definitely non zero fine so this is what i mean see it is not defined it is not defined okay here that means this is not defined not defined this is not defined at f at, at z not but it has a limit it has a limit because it is non zero that means this has a limit this has got a limit okay so it means in this in this uh, function in this function z not equal to zero it is a removable singularity that's the meaning of a removable singularity is this clear everyone yes sir. yes sir yes sir Okay. Next, we have a poll. Okay, poll. If a function f of z has got a Lorentz series about z naught, okay, if it's got a Lorentz series about z naught with a finite number of terms with negative powers, if the number of negative, you've seen what how the Lorentz series looks like, right? How does the Lorentz series look like? Lorentz series. How does the Lorentz series look like? Lorentz series, it looks like. So we have both positive and negative terms. So we have A0, then we have A1, Z minus Z0, then we have A2, Z minus Z0, A3, Z minus Z0, whole cube. This is on the positive side. On the negative side, what do we have? On the negative side, we have a minus 1. We have a minus 1 divided by z minus z naught. Then we have a minus 2 divided by z minus z naught squared plus a minus 3 divided by z minus z naught cube and so on. Okay, and this is your function f of z. Okay, this is my function, and this function has got a Lorentz series expansion like this. Okay, now what is a pole? Pole in this case, pole is also a singularity. Now, which is the point at which the function is not defined? Obviously, just by looking at it, you know if I put z equal to z naught at z equals z naught at z equals z naught, the function f of z is not analytic. Okay, it, it's no longer defined as z equals z not put z not here z minus z not. So we have one by zero, one by zero. So all these uh, negative power terms, all of them will become one by zero. So this function is going to be overall. This function is going to be not analytic. So z equals z not is a, a singularity. Now, what kind of singularity is this? This is a pole. When is this a pole? If it has got a Lorentz series with a finite number of terms with negative powers. Now here in this case, how many how many positive how many positive power terms do we have? We have infinite number of positive terms, positive power terms, and we have infinite number of negative power terms. If it happens that in like this, that is, we all the higher powers, higher negative powers, all of them vanish, and we get something like this. Okay, so now how many negative powers do we have? These are the only negative powers, right? Negative power terms, right? That means it has got two terms, two terms of negative powers, two terms of negative powers of Z minus Z naught. Okay, so two terms, the number of terms is two. So this, so, so therefore, in this case, this Z naught, okay, Z naught is a pole, is a pole of order 
two. Just count the number of no, uh, terms. Just count the number of terms which are non-negative. Just count the number of terms which are non-negative. Those number of terms which are non-negative, that will be the that will be the pole. Okay, that will be the pole. That will be the order of the pole. Okay, so this is a pole. Z equals Z not is a pole. If Z is equals Z not, if it's a pole, write down this is a Lorentz series. In the Lorentz series, just check if it has got a, you know, a finite number of terms with negative powers. If it has got a finite number of terms with negative powers, then it's a pole of order two. So if I have something, for instance, okay, if I have an example like this, okay, if I have an example like this, so let's say f of z is equal to, uh, let's say. 2 by z minus i, 2 by z minus i plus 5 plus z minus i plus 17 z minus i squared plus 18 z minus i cube and so on. If we have something like this, then which is the pole? Which is the pole? If I put z equals i, if I put z equals i, i minus i is going to give us zero. So two by zero. So this term is going to blow up. As a result, we'll get a singularity. So z not equal to i is a pole. Is a pole. What is the order? What is the order of this pole? Just count how many non uh, how many terms are there with non -neg uh, with negative powers. So how many negative parts? Only one term with negative parts. So order is one in this case. Is this clear to everyone? Once more. more. What about this one? Minus seven, minus seven, z by z plus i four. Plus two z squared. Sorry, not complicated. So minus seven plus two z by z plus i plus sixteen plus three z minus i plus nine z minus i cube and so on. In this case, the positive powers we are not interested in. Look at the negative powers and tell me what will be the order. Uh, four. four. So what is z now? Which is the pole? Which is the pole? Let me change this a little bit. Let's let's just make it a little bit more challenging. Suppose I have something like this. 2z plus i. 2z plus i. 2z plus i. 2z plus i. Now what will be the pole? What is the pole? Minus i by two. Minus i by two. Okay. Minus i by two is the pole. What is the order? What is the order? Four. Order is four. Okay. The order is four. Okay, so uh, we we uh, you you uh, you don't have to look at it, but here the number of uh, you know number of terms is two, only two terms are there. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Number of terms is two. Look at because there is two, two to the power minus one, then there is going to be two to the power minus two minus two to the power minus three. Those just happen to have zero coefficients. Look at it that way. Okay, so it gets truncated. All the higher terms, they don't come over here. So as a result, we have to consider it at, as four number of, there are four uh, terms here, four uh, finite number of terms, four terms with non -neg with negative powers. So in this case, the order is going to be four. It's not going to be two, it's going to be four, 
okay so even though only two terms are there but we just look at it as that uh, to power to the power minus uh, the, this one to the power minus 1 to the power minus 2 to the power minus 3 both of them have got zero coefficients you look at it next okay is that clear Okay, so this is the same thing. Okay, so just one more example is there. You can go through this example. Then last, uh, then last we have uh, something called as essential singularity, a singularity which is neither removable nor pole. Okay, a singularity which is neither removable nor is it a pole. That means. you can not get a limit of that uh, neither can you get a limit of the function at that z equals z not nor can you get finite number of terms so essential singularity how do you find whether a singularity is essential or not just find out the lorentz series expansion if it has got infinite number of terms with negative powers then it's a um, essential singularity example is this one e to the power 1 by z e to the power 1 by z is a uh singularity it's an essential singularity so you can just obtain the lorentz series expansion of e to the power 1 by z you will find that this lorentz series expansion it has got negative number of you know uh, sorry infinite number of negative power terms so it's a essential singularity okay is this clear to everyone yes sir okay so yes. in this problem these uh, these you can just try it at home okay identify the singularity for these functions okay just an exercise identify the singularities for these functions you can just try this out okay so i think i'm going to stop here it's uh, almost 6 uh, minutes to 2 so let me just stop here in in the next class in tomorrow's class we'll continue from this topic that is zeros and poles okay there is a complementary relationship between zeros and poles we will see that and then once we have seen then we go to the residue theorem which is an extremely useful theorem for solving many real integrals using complex uh, integration you can actually solve many real integrals using this uh, method called as a using this some uh, theorem called as a residue theorem okay so that is uh, i think that's the last topic that's the last topic in this particular module and once that is done then we can move on to um your vector spaces okay do you have any questions anybody